Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can export images as well as video out of a UXP Premiere plugin. With this code you'll be able to both export an image as well as a video directly out of Premiere using just a couple lines of code. We're going to be using just sort of the default example project that UXP creates, changing the button to export a sequence frame and or video, and let's go ahead and get started. Before we do get started, make sure you check out the links in the description to check out some of my stuff. Uh, I've got a new tool out called Suffix Slayer, a free plugin that you can download for After Effects, which removes those annoying frame endings when you render out images. And of course, lots of cool other stuff coming soon, like a LUT exporter. But let's go ahead and get started with the actual tutorial today. We're going to start off by having a clean slate here. We're requiring our Premiere Pro uh, DOM. We have a function called export sequence, and we have an onclick listener linking to that when we click on this export sequence frame button. When we take a look at the UXP guide itself, there are two things we're going to want to take a look at today. There are essentially two locations in the code where we can export things. The first one is if we click on exporter. If you look at the export class or object here, you have export sequence frame. So this will allow us to export an individual frame of any of these supported formats uh, out of Premiere. So for that, we're gonna need a sequence object, a time object, an output file name, an output file path, and a width and a height for our image. The other one is going to be in the encoder manager section. With this, we can run export sequence, which is a very similar line of code to the old scripting, where we would simply provide it with a sequence. Um, the export type, was that's kind of new the output file, the preset file, and whether or not to export the full sequence. So to get started, let's do the export sequence frame. So we know that we're going to need a couple of things, the first of which is a sequence. So we're going to need to reference a sequence. Since we've done a couple of tutorials at this point, I'll just copy and paste this code, but we're going to get the project by saying await Premiere Pro, the project area, and get the active project. Of course, you'll need to make sure you have an open project and an open sequence as well. And then to get the sequence, we'll simply reference our project and get the active sequence. Uh, before we write the actual code, let's take a look here. We get a Boolean return from this uh, code that we're running, which means if it's true, the export sequence frame successfully exported something. And if it's false, it failed. So we can create a variable called success. And we'll set it equal to await. And we're going to reference our Premiere Pro object. And we're going to reference the exporter. And now that we're inside of the exporter, we simply need to run export sequence frame. And now we need to go through and get all of the required arguments to export a frame from our sequence. So first, we need a sequence object. We already got the active sequence, so we'll select that. Then we need a time. Now to get a time, we'll create a variable called time, and we'll set it to await Premiere Pro dot tick time, and we'll say create with seconds. And what time do we want to say? Do we want it to be one second, two seconds, three seconds? We go ahead and put that in for the create with seconds argument. So now we can provide that time as a variable. Next, we have a couple of things that um, need to be fixed by the devs. So we have in the instructions here, file name. One would think that uh, the file name is just the name of the exported file without the full path. And in fact, it says description, the file name to be exported example, C temp exported frame.png. In this example, it actually contains the entire file path and the file name. But as I found out and posted on the developer forums, this doesn't work. Um, so it turns out what you actually have to do is just provide the file name. So just remember as you're looking through the guide and learning things for yourself, sometimes the things it says no longer apply or simply don't work. Then you'll have to do a lot of experimentation, check the forums, and if it's a problem, make sure you make a post about it. So in this case, we know that we just need the file name. Let's go ahead and just say, my image and whatever you define here as the file extension whether it's png bmp jpeg it's going to set automatically as the file name 
And as you'll see in a second, there's actually a second issue with this particular function. Then for file path, we have actually another issue that I found and addressed in this forum post. Yes, we do need the entire file path here. So we'll say C temp. I have a C temp folder where we were already exporting these things to. However, this particular slash does not work. We need to use this slash. And of course, to concatenate it into one, based on how strings work, it needs to be two of these slashes. If you do this, it simply won't work. So another thing that they need to fix or add support for. And then lastly, we need to choose the width and the height of our image. For now, let's just say like 500 by 500. Now what we can do is go ahead and let's first console log our time. And then we'll console log whether or not this was a success. Go ahead and load our plugin and make sure we have debugging set on and make sure we have our sequence. We will hit the export sequence frame. And as you can see, we have a tick time here with three seconds as we set it, as well as a true, meaning that in our temp folder, we now have an image exported. Now, two things we need to address and fix. Um, the first of which you're gonna notice this exported file name contains .png, .png. In the code, we just set it to myimage.png. Unfortunately, it seems to add an additional copy of the file extension. If I chose .jpg and ran it, it's gonna provide me the same double JPEG. And uh, unfortunately, it just seems to do this and we'll have to deal with it. So that's hopefully something that developers can fix. This should just obviously be one file extension. And maybe you're thinking, oh, well, if it's adding a double, maybe just remove the first one. Well, if we just say my image, it has no idea what kind of image export to do and it will fail. So that's one important thing to keep in mind. Another is that you'll notice in the image here itself, since I set it to 500 by 500, that's not the original aspect ratio or resolution of this image. What we can do is get something called the frame size. So if we say frame size, we'll set the frame size equal to a weight. We're gonna reference our sequence and get the frame size. This gives us an object with a width and a height. So we can say, instead of 500 by 500, we'll say frame size dot width and frame size dot height. We'll go ahead and change this to JPEG just so we can see a different output. We'll reload our plugin, hit the export button. All is successful. And now you can see we have my image .jpeg, JPEG, but now the resolution is the correct one uh, to match our sequence. So as you can see, not perfect. Let's move on to the video section. So as mentioned for the video, we're gonna need to reference the encoder manager. Um, and to get the encoder manager, and we'll have export sequence, we need to first get the manager. Um, so we're gonna say const encoder manager, set this equal to await our Premier Pro Dom encoder manager. And we're gonna say dot get encoder manager. Now let's go ahead and console log this just to make sure we're getting a valid variable. Say so encoder manager. I'm going to remove our other console logs here, reload the plugin, run it, seems to be failing. Ah, that's my bad. So the actual static method here is get manager, not get encoder manager. So reload that, go ahead and clear my console, run it. And as you can see, boom, we have an encoder manager. So one interesting thing here you might notice is inside of the encoder manager, we can also see is, is AME installed uh, is true. So what we can also do is get a variable for is AME installed. And we'll set that equal to encoder manager dot is AME installed. Then we can console log that. And let's go ahead and run that real quick. Reload, export. And as you can see, it is indeed installed, true. So this is another uh, property we can use to just say, hey, only export the video if AME is installed. So we can just say, if is AME installed, we're going to export the video. 
maybe there's a particular case where a user doesn't have media encoder installed, this would be a good check to put in there since we have that property for the given encoder manager. All right, now let's use the export sequence uh, line here to actually export our sequence. So to export a sequence, we need to reference our encoder manager that we got. We'll say dot export sequence. Once again, you can see this is gonna return a Boolean value. So I'm gonna create a second variable called, let's say success2, and set that equal to await. Our encoder manager, and we're gonna export a sequence. Of course, uh, we'll console log success2 to let us know was that successfully exported or not. Now let's go through and get the variables we need. We're gonna start off with our sequence. Of course, we need the sequence that we're going to export uh, right here. Then the export type. This is based on a number of constants of whether we want to just queue it in a, me in a media encoder or if we want to render it immediately. These constants are also in the guide, as you can see here. It's in this giant list of constants. But to call it, we don't just say constants.export type dot immediately. We actually need to get the constants uh, variable from the DOM first. So, so to do that, we're going to say const constants, pretty easy name to, to use, is equal to await Premiere Pro dot constants. Now, if you console log the constants, go ahead and take a look at what's inside of that. Clear the console. And as you can see here, we have our whole list of global constants. So the constant we need is going to be constants dot export type. And what export type do we want? We want immediately. So because our constants variable uses this whole object here, we just referenced the next level down, the export type, which is right here constants.export type and inside of export type what kind of export do we want to do immediately so you can also do q or q to app as well next we need the output file there's no confusion with this one it's the full path to where we're exporting to so i'm going to say c and we need to use these kind of slashes once again and then the temp folder and i'll just call this my video and we'll say .mp4 we're going to use an mp4 preset Speaking of that, we need to now use a preset file. To access your preset files, they're gonna be from Media Encoder directly. So if you have, say, uh, preset files, you can go to your version of Media Encoder in the presets folder. And in this case, I have one called mp44.epr. So I'll go ahead and copy this path, add the appropriate extra slash for each of these. And then the file name is mp 44epr EPR. Any EPR file will do. Uh, that's just where mine are located. Lastly, we have export full. True, we're going to export the full sequence. False, not sure what happens. Maybe it's the in and out bounds. But we're going to do true. And I think we're ready to try this. Go ahead and save it. Go ahead and reload it. Clear the console because we're going to get a true or false if it's successfully exported. But we're also going to see in here it's gonna say encoding when the video is successfully exporting. So as you can see, we get true as our response. If we look in our temp folder, we now have myvideo.mp4, and there's our entire video exported. So to recap, you can use the export sequence frame, part of the exporter module, in order to export an individual frame with a couple of caveats and bugs. Uh, hopefully they fix that. And then to export video, you can reference the encoder manager, check whether or not media encoder is installed, and then use this familiar function called export sequence, which we used previously in previous types of scripting, very similar to the same properties and uh, arguments here, and export your video. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe down below, and check out the links in the description if you'd like to support me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.